What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein, aka Dave Control, and here are 10 more things you may not have known about Elden Ring. As the game's been out for a while now, I'll be getting into more spoiler territory, so you have been warned. Invisible Platforms Number 1 If you find both Halic Tree Medallions, you'll be able to access the Grand Lift of Rold into a secret area, this area being the hidden path to the Halic Tree. It may seem pretty straightforward and a way to get out into a newly accessible area of the mountaintops of the Giants. However, your beast eye will quiver here and hopefully clue you in on the fact that there may be more than meets the eye when it comes to the hidden path to the Halig Tree. In fact, it's actually a minor dungeon, and you've basically just walked right into the middle of it. Exploring for a while, I was pretty baffled, and then I realized. Sometimes, From Software likes to include not only illusory walls in their games, but entirely invisible platforms you can walk across. So if you go to the middle of the staircase here, you can fall off and onto an entirely invisible platform. From this drop, you'll have two ways you can go. To the left side is a clearly visible opening in the wall, so head over here and you'll actually be able to find an illusory wall with a silver scarab talisman behind it. This talisman will raise your item discovery. Meanwhile, for traveling directly across, not much here, but you can use this and another opening further down as a guide for where the platform exists and where you can walk. Travel along this further down and you'll find another opening and the rest of the dungeon, and even a stray mimic to your boss, with a death route located behind them. Rainbow Stones Speaking of these invisible platforms, there's a really good way to test for them and find them. I'm talking about the various rainbow stones you'll pick up and be able to craft in the game. As you can see here, I actually dropped one in the hidden path to the Halic Tree dungeon to test out if there was a platform, and sure enough, that's what clued me in on it. But they're not just good for finding hidden platforms. According to their item description, Ruin Fragment that has undergone some simple processing, can also be dropped to gauge the distance of a fall. The higher the pitch of the sound, the higher the likelihood of the fall being fatal. So drop one of these bad boys and you can test to see if the rainbow stone makes a high pitched noise and shatters, which will tell you that you won't survive the fall yourself. Arrows for Platforms As this is an illusory themed episode, let's talk about arrows. Arrows are great! You can pretend you're Legolas and shoot foes from afar even while riding Torrent. Or you can be like me, who has a melee build and reserve your arrows for drawing enemies one at a time so you don't get ambushed by too many at once. There's also another use for them. As arrows stick to the ground, you can use them like rainbow stones to test for invisible platforms. This comes particularly in handy for the next invisible platform I'm about to show. Invisible Platforms Number 2 if you reach the mountaintops of the giants, you may just have found the heretical rise and asked yourself, how in the world do I get into this thing? The hint tells you falling snow marks something unseen, so clearly there's something invisible here, but where? Well, you'll actually need to travel a bit away from the heretical rise in order to properly access it. Travel to the freezing lake site of Grace, go up and past the graveyard, and head to the area on the map that looks like a broken bridge. When you find this broken bridge, as it turns out, maybe it isn't so broken. It's actually an invisible platform. The platform isn't so straightforward though. It actually curves around quite a bit and will even have you twisting around and traveling upwards. So you'll definitely want something to help guide you along. And while the rainbow stones are great, I found the best way to do this was by shooting arrows in front of you and around you in order to see where you can go. So make sure to stock up on arrows before you head here. Eventually, you will find fog on the path that makes it obvious, but that's not immediate and takes a while to get to. You'll also really want to do this if you're an achievement hunter, because the sorcery you get at the Heretical Rise is the Founding Reign of Stars, which is a legendary sorcery you'll need for an achievement. Item Categories I think I've talked about hidden platforms enough for one episode, so let's talk about some minor mechanics. The first is pretty likely you'll have noticed, but if not, it'll save you a lot of time. When you pick up an item, there's a category you'll see at the top left every time you pick it up. This icon is the same icon and category as where you'll find it in the menu. So if you haven't noticed yet, this will help save you a ton of time finding and checking out what you just picked up. Item Organization And speaking of quick ways to find items you picked up, you can reorganize your inventory and sort items in a variety of ways. While in your inventory, hit L3 and choose how you want it organized. One such option is Last Item Found, which will vastly reduce your time scrolling and searching as you get further in the game and have massive amounts of items. Not Losing Runes Upon Death Did you know there's a way to not lose your runes upon death? 
I hope you've been paying attention to your Flask of Wondrous Physic, because there are some really good tiers here you'll get for them as you explore. One of these is the Twiggy Crack tier. To find it, you'll have to head up onto the Altus Plateau and reach the capital outskirts Minor Erd Tree. It's located here on a map. And as it turns out, this particular Minor Erd Tree doesn't have any Erd Tree avatars guarding it. So you'll just have to find the chalice next to the Minor Erd Tree, and within it, you'll find the Twiggy Crack tier and Crimson Crystal tier. The Twiggy Crack tier is incredible! By putting it in your Flask of Wondrous Physic, the resulting concoction prevents one's runes from being lost upon death. However, the effect lasts only a short time. It really isn't that short though. In fact, for most boss encounters, I found that unless it's a super long encounter, the effect lasts for pretty much the entire time. So put this in your flask and definitely use it right when you walk into a boss chamber and you won't have to worry so much about losing your runes upon death than needing to regather them. Pumpkin Head's Helmet. This one is a minor detail, but kind of fun. Did you notice that when you attack Pumpkin Head, hitting his giant helmet actually makes a different sound than when you hit his body? I know it's nothing earth shattering, but it's still fun. The Ultimate Finger Maiden Husk. You can find the Finger Maiden Husk at the Round Table Hold. This kind of NPC acts as a merchant and you can purchase various items from the husk. Throughout the game, you'll find various bell bearings, with some of these being useful ones you'll find in dungeons. For example, in the Liurnia Dungeon Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, located here on a map, for defeating the Crystallian boss, you'll get the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing 1. If you give it to the Finger Maiden Husk, you'll now be able to buy Smithing Stone 1s and Smithing Stone 2s. And if an NPC dies, for example right here I found Brother Corn dead, you'll get their Bell Bearing and therefore be able to still purchase anything they sold by giving this Bell Bearing to the Husk. However, with this in mind, there's a way to give yourself the ultimate shop all in one convenient place. It is a truly evil thing to do, so I'm telling you right now that my coworker who told me this is evil and do not trust him with anything because he is a monster. What you can do is anytime you meet a merchant, go ahead and murder them. For doing so, you'll receive the Merchant's Bell Bearing, which you can give to the Finger Maiden Husk, and now have access to their entire catalog of wares right here in the Round Table Hold. Do this with every merchant you find, and you'll now have the ultimate shop. Just don't do this, you monster. Okay, I'm done trying to convince you. The Abductor Virgin. Talking to Patches and Liurnia, he'll clue you in on this because he's such a swell guy. Patches will hint that this will take you to the base of the Erd Tree, because he's Patches. Of course, he's not entirely wrong here. The Abductor Virgin can be found by jumping on the water wheel at the Academy of Rhea Lucaria and letting it take you all the way around, then drop you at the bottom. If you let this Abductor Virgin grab you and kill you with its grab, it will transport you to the Volcano Manor. You can access this part of Volcano Manor without being abducted, but I find this interesting because it's actually something I originally missed as I happened to kill the Abductor Virgin without being grabbed, and had completely forgotten by then about Patch's, uh, advice. By being transported to Volcano Manor, you'll be completely stuck in the dungeon and have to work your way out. And your reward for doing so? A boss that's not one, but two Abductor Virgins! From Soft at it again! And that wraps up 10 more things you didn't know about Elden Ring. As always, let me know in the comments if there's any interesting tidbits I might have missed, and I hope you learned at least one new thing. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.